The uh, film behind us is just a short film that I made um, last month. Um, I'm not going to try and explain it other than to say, imagine if you tagged your, all of your everyday acts. Um, this, uh, the film is called Google Will Make Us Free. And it assumes this idea that increasingly we're kind of like tagging every aspect of, of our lives. Murray is wearing a blazer tag. Um, He's drinking a beer, you know. So increasing this, bit, we have this culture of tagging and information collection and agglomeration. And then you get up to Google and type in Murray Blazer, and then it all pops up. Okay, so it's, it's kind of an interesting idea for me around this thinking around the small world. Is that it's incredibly powerful technology, Google, isn't it? It's really, really <laughs> extraordinary what it can do. But at the same time. Um, we're at a point now where technologies are being contested. We're no longer in this kind of technology is good and bad. We're in this kind of uh, era where technologies do change our lives and they change our behaviour. So before I launch into this essay, um, a few things spring to mind. So Nicholas Carr, for instance, um, says that technologies are actually changing the brain. That the way we use things like uh, internet search engines are actually changing our attention span. That, that they, they literally change us physically, and that in itself is being contended. Um, other people are talking about this idea of horizontal and vertical ideas of technology. So, if horizontal use of technology would be very much like I would check my email, I would surf the web. I would check my web stats, I might be constantly on this horizontal plane of lots of information but never actually drilling down into anything in particular. Now a lot of people in this room are probably at that point in their lives where the way they use technology is very, very hor is, is horizontal and that's partly to do with how some of the software works. Facebook is a good example of a horizontal technology, it encourages lots of interaction, lots of surface interaction, but there, there's, there isn't a vertical, very rarely a vertical drilling down point. So a vertical use of, of, of technology or vertical approach would be, well, uh, okay, let's read a book. It's 350 pages long, it's been written by somebody, and it actually requires you to sit down to absorb the thought and to think. So a lot of technologies have this kind of like horizontal idea. Interestingly enough, just prior to us doing this, um, Malcolm Gladwell, who probably a lot of people know um, for his tipping point writing, he's an expert in picking up on the, the latest cultural zeitgeist. Um, he, he just recently picked up on this idea of horizontal and vertical uh, technology. And he, at the moment, is saying, well, Twitter and Facebook are, are kind of uh, the equivalent of sort of time wasting. They, they don't really go anywhere. They just encourage us to spend a lot of time rather aimlessly. But actually what Gladwell has done there is of course to pick up on quite a, a more of an in-depth thought that's coming out of a critique of technology, um, that, it, that, it is, that it is something that needs to be contended. So my, my little essay here is really starts out with the, um, the great exhibition. I'm, you'll forgive me if I read this. Um, so in 1851, the Great Exhibition took place at the Crystal Palace in Hyde Park in London, and it was billed as the work, the works of industry of all nations, um, and attracted six million people. The Great Exhibition proved to be a turning point in which the general public became keen observers of new technological developments and scientific affairs. In 2010, the Shanghai Expo in China attracted over 52 million visitors with a series of nation-state pavilions as a grand gathering of the world cultures. In the 160-year period between the two exhibitions, the baton of economic and industrial power has been well and truly ceded to the Chinese. At the same time, through networked extension 
and digital connectivity, we are in an unprecedented era of access to ideas, information and thought. This extension distorts the supremacy of the nation state and blurs the boundaries of authority. Google's conflict with the Chinese government around censorship effectively illustrates this issue. Pure. <coughs> Everyone is an expert, everyone has something to say, and every channel can in theory compete on a level playing field. Such a techno-utopia provides everyone with an equivalent set of tools rendered through the cloud and often free. The cloud is a place where we store our data off-site, an extended data space provided by a corporation or a social media business such as Facebook. Increasingly, we become more mindful of how we present ourselves, who is watching, and what we share. In the small world attention economy, the tools are yours to play with. Go forward and make what you will with them, money, love, or videos in the backyard to share with the world. You are now the Chief Operating Officer of YouGov in the realm of You Enterprise and You Creative. You are the content and you are the king, and so is everybody else. The Small World Fair Exhibition sets out to engage people in this debate. <coughs>